I'm Katherine Austin and welcome to Living Karma Yoga, a show where we celebrate all that the yoga world has to offer. From the postures to music, mantra, meditation, travel, cooking, and so much more. Yoga for one hour just isn't enough in today's busy world, so we want to help you take your yoga off the mat and into your life too. I hope you find here many tools to help you live the life you deserve. And that's a life where you can literally vibrate love, joy, fulfillment, and abundance in all forms. For decades, Allison Kaplan has taught group fitness and worked as a personal trainer in the Detroit area. Allison's yoga journey started with the Hatha Yoga as a way to enhance her life and offer students a balanced approach to fitness and wellness. Allison's deeply passionate about empowering and inspiring women to live a healthy life on every level. In 2008, Allison founded AskInYourFace.com, and this is an online women's web magazine that launched the Michigan Coalition on Midlife Eating Disorders, the 10,000 Steps Get Healthy Walking Program, and the Haven Garden Project, and an Encore Careers Initiative. Allison is a Get Fit contributor for Fox 2 News in Detroit, a speaker and a wellness coach, and most importantly, amazing teacher at Karma Yoga in Bloomfield Hills. Thanks, Allison, for joining us today on our show. And I love that we're going to spend some time sharing with our students and new people to yoga about this term modifications. And I know that when I teach, when I use that term, people sometimes that are new to yoga can interpret it the wrong way. And they yes. can feel like it's less than, or they're not doing it good enough. And actually today, we wanna to show the complete opposite of actually how empowering it can be to use it some support, assisting us in the poses. Um, you know, it actually builds some courage to actually try some things a different way, yes. which is a beautiful aspect as we teach yoga at karma on how to take your yoga off the mat and into your life. So if you're using this technique and technology of support. Support. Trying things, yeah, support, <laughs> and trying something differently, getting out of your box and your projection of what you think should happen, it's unbelievable what, what happens in your life, and even on the yoga mat. Definitely. So I'm so glad you're here to help us walk through this. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Well, interestingly enough, just this morning I was teaching a class and um, I had a very nice young man, about 23, extremely fit, weightlifter, runner, swimmer, athlete from high school and in college. And he came in today um, and he said, this is my very first yoga class. I've never stepped foot in one and I've always wanted to try it. So he was excited, but he was nervous. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's so great. I said, I'm going to suggest to you today that all of the poses that we go through in class, that you use the modifications. And for most of the poses, we'll use the blocks right here, which are a gift. Mm -hmm. And the blanket, or the, which Catherine's sitting on right now, which helps sit her up a little bit taller, because it's always best for your hips to be up a little bit higher than the knees, so you don't feel that dumping into your right, low back. Right, if the back. back is tight, you're going to yeah. be like this. Right. And if you sit on the edge of the blanket, it allows the pelvis to tilt forward, and then these femur bones drop deeper in. Yes. And you feel better. Yeah. So I always get this really nice lift if I sit up. And then again, you know, there's always the people that are able to be in the full pose, and be able to sit upright without anything. Like my daughter here, Samantha, is able to sit comfortably and that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. So just quickly back to the story. So he um, went through the class and he did everything either with a block or a blanket. Um, he came back to child pose for a rest when he needed it, which I had suggested. Nice. And he also did any poses that required um, us being like in downward dog or in a high lunge or whatever, he came to his knees. Perfect. So he said to me after class, he said, oh, I just loved it. And he said, I had no idea how challenging this would be for my flexibility and my breath and everything. And he said, I can't even imagine how hard it would have been had I not used the blocks and just come and try to muscle my way through. Perfect which is, example. So it was just like, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I mean, you actually can get further and more with a little help and assistance in the poses. Yes. It's, 
It's it's the opposite of what we think. Yes, a lot of times. And I did say to him, I said, you know, you you this is practicing smart. Yes. And by practicing smart, you're going to get stronger. Right. You know, and you're going to get stronger with your flexibility. Um, you know, on the mat and out into your life, and you're going to see that your workouts in the gym, because I do these kinds of workouts also, mm -hmm. and you know, you're going to find that you're going to have less tension in the muscles. You know, you're going to, and just less tension in your life. Right. So if you're carrying less tension, mm -hmm. which is the process of yoga is to release that, Correct. you're going to actually be stronger because you have some flexibility. And yes. it takes, you have to have the stira sukha, the balance of the flexibility and the strength. Right. Yoga is not just all um, Cirque du Soleil, because then you're not going to have any strength. No, not I mean, at They all. are strong, but you know what I mean? If you're overly flexible, overly gumby, then you don't have something to hold your structure together. Right. So yoga is balance, Very which much. is what we take into our lives life to hopefully work some balance into right. our life because most people were all out of balance. So yes, all out of balance. So we're going to go through some poses today you're going to show us and yes. um, we're going to show us different variations and how we can do things a different way so there's no reason to not come to yoga. Right. Because we can work around anything. Yes. I mean all three of us, I know Sam with your back, me with my shoulder, my knees, yeah. Catherine with your foot surgery. I mean we've all experienced, you know, surgeries that have you know, presented challenges where we right. can't do everything we want, but we have found a way yep. by being open to finding a new way to do something. Right. You know, and the amazing thing is, is that by allowing yourself to be in a pose with a modification or another way to do it, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, what you learn about yourself being in the pose in that way is wonderful. It's incredible. Yeah. So let's go. Well, let's begin. Let's okay. get started. So we're going to start in child pose, and Samantha is going to come into the traditional full shape of the pose. And let me just kind of move that out of the way. And Catherine, as you can see, is going to come on her back here because it's definitely going to be more comfortable for her. So if you look at these two poses right now, if I were to take Catherine and flip her upside down, here she is and vice versa. So this one just allows for more comfort, you know, generally in the pose. If you have challenges with your knees in particular, your hips, your back, okay? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that Samantha can do also is if she has stress in the shoulder, she can bend her arms and this immediately by bending the elbows will take the stress right off the shoulders. She can also lift her head up and place her forehead right on the block, just her forehead. There you go. And bring her hands around the block. And there she is. You feel very relaxed, right? Yeah. Okay. So because you don't want any tension in the neck at all. And also notice here, Catherine has great support being on her back for her neck. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moving on, um, we're going to move on now to cat cow. We'll come to table pose. And Samantha, again, is going to come to the traditional full shape of the pose, which is shoulders over wrist, hips over knees, hip width apart, shoulder width apart. Catherine, as we explained in the beginning, is going to sit up on the blanket because she's going to be most comfortable with her hips a little bit lower than her back, a little bit higher than her knees, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's going to give her a lot of comfort. She can grow taller and more comfortably up out of her hips, and there's just a lot less pressure here. So cat, cow, Sam's going to inhale, float her heart forward, the back flexes just a little bit, the belly softens, she's going to exhale round and empty. Simple, seems simple, huh? Not always for everybody. So Catherine here is showing us, which I know comes from her kundalini practice, <laughs> um, seated cat, cow. So if you watch these two poses, I'll make sure I'm out of the way here, they are doing Exactly the same okay. thing. Exactly the okay? same. Okay? Exactly the same thing. There's no difference in the benefit. Catherine's not getting more or less, and either is Samantha. Okay? So it works for everybody. Okay, so moving on from here, we're going to come into spinal balance on our hands and knees, um, which grows right from table pose. Samantha's extending her right leg back, reaching out with the left arm, firming the low belly up, lifting up out of the wrist, the elbows. Everything's very nicely aligned strong and balanced here, building strength in the core. Moving over to Catherine. Um, it can do so, one leg, right? Yeah, yeah Catherine can do just one leg. It may be too much strain on her back today or for whatever reason that she can't do both the arm and the leg. She can also lower the knee back down and extend just the arms. 
just one arm, okay? Beautiful. She can also come back to full extension, perhaps left leg, right arm. Good, and she can place this underneath her left hand to help with any discomfort underneath her left forearm to help with any discomfort on the wrist. One of the reasons people get very anxious about coming to class with injuries or just oh, yoga yeah. in general is they're very concerned about wrist pain and you don't have to be. There's always a way. Yeah, okay? there's so many students that think they can't do these poses because we're on our hands a lot, which is true, but there's so many ways to work around it. Yes. And, you know, even the cat-cow, like a lot of times this bothers people in their neck. Yes. So when I was doing the seated version, in fact, you can even do it here, my neck's not involved at all. No, not at all. So, right. Works great. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, Sam, you can relax there just for a moment. Okay, and next we're going to come down onto our bellies. And Samantha is going to come into Cobra Pose. Beautiful. Which transitions us very often back to Downward Facing Dog, which we'll get to. Her legs are long. She's resting on tops of the feet. Shoulders are relaxed. The neck is long, okay? And this is a heart opening pose. And so is this. This is Sphinx Pose. And this is the most wonderful modification or different way to do the pose mm -hmm. and the benefits are exactly the same the spine is long the neck is long the heart is forward but she has all of this support on her forearms mm -hmm. she doesn't have any discomfort going on in her shoulders and the low back is comfortable everything seems to be flowing nicely this is such a big great first position for yes. a back bend because so many people have a lot of tension they're not ready to go up any higher than this it's perfect and a wonderful little trick in this pose which i love that you can't necess you can't probably experience it as well in cobra here is if Catherine kind of squeezes the mat with the tips of her fingers with her finger pads mm -hmm. and she can kind of almost feel like she's pulling her heart forward pulling her body forward it's amazing mm. how that just lights up all the muscles that line her mm -hmm. spine. And that's not really something that you can exactly translate into this pose quite the same way. Right. So here again is an example of when we're using a modification, sometimes there's ways to get stronger here mm -hmm. that we cannot do here. Right, and we're actually, what we're doing is activating the energy. Activating when we're energy. drawing the elbows back. It's, it's, you can't see it as clearly, but once you experience it, it's such a different feeling than just kind of hanging out here. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, so moving on to our next pose from here. Samantha's going to hug her belly in, lift right back up to downward facing dog. Catherine's coming up onto her knees to do it. Other block. Oh yeah, I'm gonna grab this other block. Okay. And because perhaps Catherine or another student has issues with the wrist, I'm not even going to have her start this way to even try it. We're just going to go right onto the blocks. Mm -hmm. This is going to alleviate wrist pain and discomfort for her. Okay, she can get nice and long here. So I'm going to back up. I want to make sure that you can all see these poses clearly. I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference here except that we have raised the floor right. for Catherine. So this makes it so much easier. Yeah. And then look, you can go different heights. So yes. If you're not ready there, this is even better. Yes. And I actually can get deeper in my shoulders because I can move the arm bones yes, more you can. forward. You know, when we talk about sometimes softening be at the back of the heart between the shoulder blades, it's most like a little bit easier for you to do it here yeah. than you would be able to here because as she said, she can really get between those shoulders, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Another way for Catherine to modify the pose to take some pressure off of the low back and the shoulders would be to widen her stance. Whenever we widen the stance in a pose, we have a broader base of stability for the body. Yeah. And so those joints don't take up so much of the stress. This is really widening a tremendous really amount right widening. here, which is where everybody yep. carries their chest. You can really widen our sits bones here, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. And open the low back. Yes, and mm -hmm. really open that low back. Can you all see that? Okay, good. Beautiful. Okay, so you guys had enough of that? Mm, no, it feels pretty good, actually. <laughs> okay, great. So from here, we're both, we're all gonna walk our feet to the top of the mat. We're gonna come into forward fold, Uttanasana. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about a wonderful release for the low back and a way to really lengthen and open the hamstrings. So Samantha is easily able to bring her hands all the way to the floor. She happens to have long arms, mm -hmm. okay? So sometimes people with long arms have a much easier 
time. Okay, so she's great. The concern here for me is as long as she can get her hands to the floor and help support herself, she's not going to have any strain on her low back. Mm -hmm. She can also soften her knees a little bit mm -hmm. or a lot of it. All right, so Kathy perhaps can't get her hands to the floor, but we still want to get her releasing the low back and opening the backs of the legs, lengthening the hamstrings. So again, she's going to use the blocks, raising the floor up, elevating her practice, <laughs> right? Finding yep. another way to yep. do it. You know, it's under learning about herself in the pose in a very different way. So it, how does that feel? Pretty good? It feels good. And you can explore, like, now as things open up a little bit more, you can yes. lower. Yep. And you can even do this. So you can watch yourself grow over time as yes. things open up. And also, the same thing you did in down dog, we could start wider here with yes. the legs because it's just going to be more forgiving to the low back and the hips. And eventually, someday, perhaps, she may be able to work without the blocks mm -hmm. but even if she never can work without the blocks it's it's okay this is wonderful it yeah. doesn't take away from the quality of her practice at all as a matter of fact it absolutely enhances and this is easier to do this pose like this and I'm just gonna sidebar for a second yeah. because sometimes in yoga there'll be this seated forward bend which is so difficult for so many people to go forward because you get trapped by the floor it, you can only do so far yes so when you're standing though things open up much easier so this would be another way to do that same pose yes on the floor Absolutely. i would say to the student get up and do it this way you're going to much more opening much more until opening. things open and yes. then you can sit down because again if you look at when Kathy's go back up into mm -hmm. the forward fold, if you look at her in the pose, again, like we were talking about before, if I were to take her body and just flip her onto right. her legs, she would be in the forward fold. You flip her back up. So yeah. if you look at the poses kind of that way, right. how to do them. You know, them sometimes work. it's easier to understand, you know, what we're talking about. Because same the shape pose. stays yep. the same. Yep. It's where we're coming from in the pose. I often okay. say, you know, a lot of people will come into class that have hip replacements or limitations in their hip. Yes. And I'll say, if this pose doesn't work for your hip or your knee, let me know. I can give you something else to do. There's Another, always something yeah, else. Yeah, there's no reason that you right. do not come to yoga. Okay, so from here, girls, we're, <laughs> we're going, oh, we're we're going, going to go move. We're going to go back into our forward fold, or we can just stand up. Okay. We're actually going to go into one of my favorite poses for working well, I love them all for modifications, but tree pose, which is a balancing pose, um, is a place where many of our students, or you know, me included at sometimes, would rush to the wall for support. Right. Okay. But what we really need to learn in tree pose, and Samantha, you can go ahead and set yourself up, and she's going to just start with her hands at her heart center, with her thumbs coming to her sternum, which is going to give her a little more connection to herself and be able to stand Okay, so we really want to learn how to ground ourselves in the pose. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't ground ourselves or open in the pose or experience the joy of the pose, our ability to concentrate and balance, mm -hmm. you know, and find, be able to use that singular focus. Our leg doesn't have to be up here to do it. Correct. Okay. Our leg can be, our foot can be right down here. Mm -hmm. Catherine can also bring it to her calf muscle. This is, again... She's experimenting, she's learning, she's gonna find her stability on the floor, and maybe she'll, as you can tell, she's able now to grow in the posture and continue growing in the posture. And it doesn't right. necessarily all happen in one class. It could take several weeks or months for this to come, but the patience and the acceptance of the right. self, eventually it will all come. You know, wherever you are in the posture is where you're meant to be at this moment. One thing I do wanna mention is that um, a precaution here is that the only thing we don't want to do is ever place the foot against the knee. We don't want to push against that right. joint. Above or below the joint. Yeah, easily. above or the below the joint only. And, you know, it's not wrong to take a risk and no, try not. and see if you're ready. And then if you come above and it's like this is too much, too soon, you just back out of the pose. It's right. all good. And think about how you could take that into your life. Oh, Oops, I went into that too fast too soon. You know, okay, now I'm going to go slower consciously into this that is next true. thing. And a lot of people are shy away from the balancing poses because they're getting nervous because they don't think they're going to be good at it and they're going to fall right. down. Right. But the trembling and the shaking and the vibrations that occur in the balancing poses are so wonderful. I mean, I would be concerned if none of that were happening because then you really wouldn't be growing in the pose. That's, it's yeah. enlivening the nervous system. It's, it's a sign that you're strengthening the nervous yep, system. Yeah, you are strengthening the nervous system. And when we fall down, 
and we get back up and we try again, what happens? We get stronger. Right. And we, so. I think it's not always the best idea to go to the wall all the down. time with balancing because it becomes a crutch. Yes. For certain poses for safety, absolutely. Right. But this is safe. Right. So it's okay to feel unsteady and wobbly, and yoga teaches you how to be secure yes. with the insecure. Yes. And how to be steady with the unsteady, because right. that's life. And finding <laughs> stability yeah. in a very unstable environment. Right. Which this can be for yeah. many. But there again is sort of the root of what we're doing in yoga. You know, we're taking those really important life lessons mm -hmm. here and then taking them out into the world. That's what it's all about That's as far as I'm about, concerned. Right? <laughs> Sam knows that too. Okay, so our final pose for today, I think mm -hmm. we'll probably be we need to wrap it up as soon as we're going to come down onto our backs in pigeon pose. Well, Kathy actually is going to come down onto her back. Samantha, again, is going to come into the full expression or shape of the pose. Okay, so this pose can tend to literally bring up a lot of challenges for people. Um, there can be issues with a hip, most commonly with a knee. So by hugging the belly in and lifting up, walking your fingertips in just a little bit higher, coming up right here. Sam can just stay right here, soften the shoulders, keep the heart drawing forward, and she's good. Then she can come further down if she's ready, okay? Mm -hmm. Catherine here again is on her back. Absolutely no stress on the knee. Nope. None whatsoever. And this is plenty of a hip opener even plenty here. Plenty of a hip opener. And if she wants more of a hip opener here, like maybe what Sam's getting, she can flex this foot mm -hmm. more, activating the hip. She can bring this knee up and reach for it and she can flex this foot a little bit, kind of waking up those hips more. Yeah. And again, her neck is comfortable, her shoulders, her spine is fully supported. And basically she's pretty comfortable, but feeling a lot, feeling yep. enough. Getting plenty. Getting plenty. And maybe someday she'll be able to move over here where Sam is. And if not, that's okay too. It doesn't too. matter. It doesn't it's matter. Good. So you can see there is something for everyone in yoga. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not coming to yoga because I can't do this is, you know, yeah. It shouldn't stop you. Okay. Well, let me come up to seated. Yeah, we'll come back up to seated. Good. Go ahead. Is there anything else, or are we out of time? Well, I think we're kind of okay. running out of time right. here. Well, it was really a great lesson to say that, you know, if we argue for our limitations, then they're ours. <laughs> it's an old yes. saying, right? So yoga is beautiful at helping you to open the mind, look further, widen your perspective, see how to do things a different way, to look at things even differently. That's what some of the biggest benefits I've gotten from yoga in my life. Yes. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Allison. Thank, thank you, you so Samantha. much. We love and being here. We can't wait to see you at Karma, um, www.karma-yoga.net. And check us out on Facebook and Twitter as well.